I grew up in like I grew up in the Bay Area, you know what I'm saying? I grew up in in Oakland and in Richmond, you know, just like real inner city grimy areas, you know what I mean? My mom was a single parent, just like a lot of my partners and a lot of people out there. And uh, my father was in prison, just like a lot of people, you know, the same story a lot of you know, ghetto youth have, you know. And uh, it was kind of tough, man, especially in, uh, when we was in Oakland, you know. I, I went to a lot of schools. I went to Golden Gate in North Oakland. I went to Franklin in East Oakland, you know what I'm saying, in uh, elementary. And uh, that's, you know, we, I started getting into drugs and everything. Elementary, you know, young dudes started selling drugs at a real young age. And talk about your father, just to, just to jump to that before we move on is that uh, you know he was in the prison system for most of your life and, right. and recently got out and, and and I don't know what happened and how has that affected you? Um, I don't really know what happened I just know that he was he was murdered you know we had we used to spend a lot of time in Phoenix like Arizona you know a lot of California people go to Arizona for some reason you know, I guess it was cheaper or whatever but uh you know, it's a lot of gang banging activity. It's it's really like I've lived in the Bay Area, I lived in in, in, in Phoenix and uh, I have to say every single night in Phoenix you hear gunshots and you hear sirens, helicopters, you know. He was out there man and he was caught up. He was going he was in the gangs and all that, you know, he was a crip and all that, so he he I'm no telling what he was doing, you know what I'm saying? I really don't know. I wasn't with him, you know. He but it was somebody who actually I cared about. He cared about me, you know. And it was like, really, that, it really, it was like I wasn't around him anyway. So it was so, kind of like I, I really think about. I would have to really, really, really think. But then you know, I always do other things to cloud my brain. And then immediately after that, the same thing happened to my grandfather in the same place, in the same area, you know, the same in, in Arizona. You know what I mean? six months after, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, all of that, and seeing everything that I've actually seen on the streets prior to that, mm -hmm. and the things that I've been through, the things that these hands have done, you, you really get numb to when things like that happen, even if it's immediate family, you know what I'm saying? So Maybe to those that don't um, you know, know you as an artist or anything like that, but anybody who, who's known you as an artist um, listens to your music, um, knows that you are a Muslim faith. How do you keep that balance like inside your head? I, I would want to know how you're able to be both. I just, I, just, I just ended up getting to a point in my life where really, this is before my father died, before everything, I, I was really by myself. I found myself actually by myself, you know what I mean? And uh, <clears throat> I really had time to really just read and figure out certain things about religion that I was always curious about. You know what I mean? And I always looked up to Malcolm X and admired Malcolm X. The Quran was like a book that came 1400 years ago and it was never been, it's never been tampered with, never been touched, and the words have never been flipped around or changed or nothing. And it's just too real. You know what I mean? It's just what it is. It's just actually the reality of what's, what life is all about. And you know, it just, um, let me know that uh, I, whatever I, whatever I did in the past and everything that I did, I really can't ha get held accounted for the things that I didn't know. You know what I mean? But then when <clears throat> once you know, once you know, you get held accounted for it. So you know, and our music, you know, is haram in there. That's, that means that it probably won't sit too good with somebody who's, who's a, a religious person. I really came from a, I didn't come from straight religious background, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's those people out there that listen to me, that they gonna, only way that they is gonna, they gonna even get to know anything about Islam is through me. Me personally, yeah, I do a few things that I'm not supposed to do that I feel like I shouldn't do, but, you know, I do other things that I, that I should do, you know what I'm saying? Also, try to, that's how I balance it out. Uh, one of the most... I guess you could say talked about the second most talked about member in the group um, to date will be Hustler, um, who is right now serving time in Terminal Island. You know that. First of all, Hustler's like a real solid dude. You know what I mean? Like he, 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 he went on a run for two years, and it was people ratting on him and all kind of stuff like that. And when they finally caught up to him, you know, 
he left everybody out of it. He didn't say nothing about nobody, he didn't tell on nobody, he didn't do nothing like that that, you know, some people might try to make accusations that they don't even know what the hell they're talking about, you know. He, he got into this drug program, you know what I'm saying, while he was in there. You know, he was just studying and just trying to get become a better man with his life. Like, you know, Hudson's a changed man. He's been there, it's been three years now, you know what I'm saying? So he gets his chance to go into a halfway house. I don't know how long they'll have him in there, but when you get in there, you out. And, uh, you know, we need him out here because, you know, we need more smart dudes on the street to really just let us know the real, man. You know, because everybody knows it's blacks, we think. The most taken advantage of to the point where we don't even know who we are. You know what I'm saying? We think we... We wake up every morning thinking we're white, wanting the white life, you know what I mean? So when a brother go to the prisons and he, and he takes advantage of it and reads the book and gets the knowledge and come home and, you know, share it with us, man, you know, especially somebody like us who we all look up to, you know, it's all, all these good things. And sometimes jail ain't the worst place for you, you know what I mean? You're in the best shape of your life, eating food, you're reading, you're smarter as you've ever been, you ain't getting in no trouble. Yeah, you know, so, you know, sometimes it's a... Really the best thing that ever happened to somebody, you know what I'm saying? Free Hus coming home this year.